Hello everyone. I am not sure if uh, I just, just got to figure this this software out. I'm not sure if I'm uh, actually live totally yet or not. But uh, so, anyways, <clears throat> okay, there we go. A lot of light turned green on the screen, so maybe now I'm I'm live broadcasting. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, welcome to Astronomonkey. I am George, and you are about to be I don't know nominally entertained. But hey, with quarantine going on. You know, hey, any kind of entertainment works, I suppose. So, I'm going to start it out with a uh, an oldie but goodie. And uh, I'm sorry, I got, I've got uh, I got a friend here who's asking me questions about stuff over over Messenger here. So we'll start out with a good old oldie but goodie, though. The good old Orion Nebula. We're going to explore a couple of a uh, couple of items. That are in the Orion Nebula that are a little less, uh, a little less viewed, uh, if you will. Uh, we're going to look at a planetary nebula and a reflection nebula that are kind of, uh, kind of out there. We're going to try to see if we can't find a. Uh, there's a little small galaxy um, in the Orion constellation there, um, and then we're going to move on to taking a look at some stuff in Leo and possibly some stuff in Colma Berenices. Um, got several targets lined up. We're going to take a look see what we can see. My uh, good old um, mount here for some reason is being a little little weird tonight, so um, hopefully we're going to find our targets. If not, we'll cut our losses. So, But uh, thanks for tuning in if you're tuned in. If not, that's okay too. You can watch the video later. Uh, so, anyways, uh, you're going to hear cars driving by. You may see some uh, brightening of the image where cars have driven in and, and gotten kind of intruded into our viewing, but that's okay. Um, so, like I said, right now we're looking at uh, Orion Nebulus' M42 or Messier 42. Uh, Messier is a catalog, uh, of course, named after a guy uh, who discovered a lot of this stuff. And uh, so this is this is Messier, Messier 42, and it's the Great Orion Nebula. Um, and the Orion constellation, when you look up at the Orion constellation, um, just know that that whole area really is one giant complex of nebula. Uh, the Great Orion Nebula is just kind of one famous part of it that's really obvious and really clear and kind of easy to see. Um, but, uh, but there's a huge amount of nebulosity just kind of all through the entire Orion constellation along with, with other features as well. So, all right, well, with that, we are going to attempt to take a look at NGC 2022 uh, as our first target, which is a planetary nebula that is located uh, kind of between Orion's head and his right shoulder. Um, so we are going to take a look. Oh, I just saw a shooting star uh, shoot past Orion there. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so we're going to try to take a look at this planetary nebula, NGC 2022. Uh, so just bear with me. I'm going to turn my mic off. You may sound it may sound silent here, but it's just easier if I turn it off and you don't hear me cussing in my mouth.
All right, so this is uh, this is part of the uh, fun, quote unquote, I guess, of uh, working with some of this stuff. If your scope alignment is not right on, and if you're not using some kind of guide, uh, some kind of scope to act as a guide scope, uh, it can be interesting finding uh, finding some of these objects. So we're going to do our best here. And uh, if things are not working out, I may end up having to uh, take a little pause to try to realign, or may just have to uh, kind of call this one off. I hate to call off the video, but I also don't want to sit here and waste your time uh, watching me just kind of zip around through the stars. So. Tell you what, these cars don't stop driving through. I'm gonna lose my mind. I never seen so many cars need to drive through somewhere in my life. It drives me crazy. It is all night long here. All right. All right. Let's see. Here. I'm gonna put it. Uh, put this back on silent again here. While I'm trying to take a look. Here. I feel like we're in the neighborhood, but uh, I'm just trying to match up some star patterns here. Use my little handy dandy software to see if I'm seeing what I think I'm seeing. And it is tough trying to line this stuff up sometimes. So I. Hey, I apologize if you're watching this, and uh, I don't know what is going on with my scope. Sometimes this mount is right on, and sometimes this mount uh, is acting a little, acts a little wonky, and I don't know why. Uh, but of course, you know, it is what it is. It's technology; it does what it wants to do. So. Yeah, hey Jessica, just so I don't have to try to type with the keyboard. 
doesn't backlight here. So, yeah, I've, I'm turning the mic on and off some, uh, just so people don't have to listen to me cussing and fussing uh, when I'm trying to get this thing to line up on stuff. Alright, so we're going to go back to preview mode here. Try to see if we can figure out what's happening. So I feel like we're kind of in the neighborhood, but I just can't get these stars to line up the way I think they need to to tell me if I'm going the right direction or not. up having to scrub this target and shoot for something else like I said it's sometimes you sometimes you find them sometimes you don't and uh, you just kind of move on and find new stuff when you don't find them because we could be sitting here trying to scroll through this all night long so I don't really want to do that I want to try to hit some targets I'll tell you if we uh, seem to be having kind of the same issue on this next target um, I may have to try to, to do a realignment and then come back to it, uh, come back to broadcasting here in a little bit. Yeah, my, uh, my mount looks like it is way off, honestly, so I'm not sure what's going on here. We'll try one more target, and then I may have to do a realignment. Um, for anybody is interested, anybody that is watching, Jessica, I think you're the only person actually watching, which is okay. Um, you might want to spend some time out just looking up. I just saw a really, really bright uh, shooting star go past, and that was actually the astronomy night that we were supposed to have on the 20th was actually lined up with uh, trying to be out there for um, for some of this uh, meteor shower that's going on right now. And I'm not going to lie to you, I cannot remember the name of which one is going on right now, but um, but yeah, there, there is a meteor, we are kind of in the middle of a meteor shower right now, and uh, so that uh, I'm seeing quite a few actually out here surprisingly enough which is really cool it's about the only thing I'm seeing because obviously having technical issues so alright well we're gonna call this one a miss it's a shame um, it would have been interesting to, to take a look at but uh, we're gonna call this one a miss and we'll, we'll move on uh, what we were trying to look at is the NGC 2022 it's planetary nebula uh, and it is about 8,000 light years away, 
about one light year across, um, and uh, it's, you know, we'll explain, a, I can explain planetary nebula at another time, but since we're not looking at one, I don't guess there's any point sitting here killing ourselves talking about it, so let's, uh, let's try to move on here, see if we can find something else here to look at. If we can't find this next target, I'm going to have to uh, do a realignment. I don't know why my scope is as far off as it is. Yes, Jessica, those, uh, what you're seeing, like, what that's, that's the camera panning, so it's just kind of like, you're just seeing, uh, you're just basically seeing kind of the streaks caused by the stars on the camera as it's moving, so, yeah, it kind of looks like shooting stars, that would be cool if that was the case, though, that would be a pretty epic, uh, pretty epic shooting star. Or a meteor shower, I guess, if you want to call it that. Alright. Okay, so we're going to try this next target here. Uh, really disappointed that, uh, that things are not working the way we want them to, but it is what it is. Okay. So yeah, so my scope is way off. Um, we are going to have to do some serious star hopping to get to the target we're supposed to get to. Um, I didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to do that. I want to go. I want to keep shifting the stars up. I don't know what's going on. This thing has gotten way off. Um, so I may have to stop broadcasting, get things realigned, and then start back with a new broadcast, so, but I think at the very least we can get on this target, so we're going to keep on, we're going to keep on pressing home here. Alright, so where we're heading actually now is going to be M78, so Messier 78. So this is the 78th object in his catalog. Uh, mind you, dude found all this stuff back in the 1700s, I believe. Um, so using unsophisticated equipment, probably very low-grade optics by today's standards, of course, um, and yet he managed to find all of this stuff. Now, granted, he also didn't have the light intrusion that we have, and all of the issues that we have with things going on in uh, in our world nowadays. Um, you know, everywhere you look, there's a porch light on, there's a street light somewhere. Luckily, I have no street lights in my neighborhood, which is, is a blessing. Um, but uh, let's see. Here. But, you know, it is what it is. We make do. Luckily, cameras can do a lot of, of seeing through some of that mess. 
Um, I also have a filter on there, uh, which is called a, um, well, say a UHC filter. Basically, it's a uh, it's a filter that helps to keep all of the stray, junky light out. So basically, it narrows the bandwidth of what is visible to the stuff that is typically emitted. Here's our object coming into view. So it. Um, it is going to uh, block out all of the, the crap light, basically. All of those wavelengths that are created by headlights and um, porch lights and street lights and all of that stuff. And the sky glow uh, just from, from the sun or the moon, it helps to block some of that as well. Um, and only allows through kind of those narrow bands of material, I mean material of light, that, um, that are going to show up. show you what you want to see so and we actually get kind of a two for one so this is m78 um, the bigger one in the middle and once we once I kind of get this centered here we will uh, we'll turn off preview mode so what I'm in is kind of in a fast viewing mode to help us see quickly and then uh, I can put it into video mode which is kind of like a stacking mode and it'll it'll stack these exposures on top of one another to help clear up what we want we can adjust our our amount of time so this here where my finger is will be uh, M78 Messier 78 and this down here is actually going to be a smaller nebula of the same type that is NGC 2071 so uh, hold on to your uh, hold on to your seats folks it's gonna get uh, it's gonna get crazy here Whoa, watch out. All right, let's see here. Let's spread our histogram out here a little bit. I think this is going to be one of those ones we really do need to do uh, some pretty long exposures for. This is actually what is known as a reflection nebula. I'm going to set this up to about 35 second exposures, and hopefully that is going to give us what we want. So, for your informational purposes, I like to take notes, so I've got stuff to talk about. And we may talk about planetary nebulas, even though that's not what this is, just because I took the time to write it up. So this is M78 Nebula in Orion. Um, as I said, it's going to be this bigger one here in the middle. Um, the smaller one here is NGC oh, 2071. Um, didn't have any notes about that one. Honestly, wasn't anticipating pulling it into the into the view. Um, all right, so we got a little bit of image shift here that's going on. We're gonna hit a reset on this thing for some reason. We've gotten some. We've got some tracking issues here too. It seems like so sit on there try to get a new exposure hopefully it'll straighten that out a little bit all right let's see we got a reset here let's go back I'm going to take a look in this preview mode here again and just try to figure out what's going on how much we're drifting here because it seems like we're getting a lot of a lot of drift Four seconds, but when you hold off for 30 seconds, it may, drift, it may be drifting quite a bit. So, yeah, I can actually visibly see the drift in four second exposures. So, for some reason, we get a lot of tracking error, error too, which is a problem, but uh, we're going to push through here and see what we can do. Um, Alright, so we'll cut it down to about 20, about 20 seconds so we can get out of that. Trying to see what we can get. All right, so M78, sorry, bright reflection nebula discovered by Pierre Machain in 1780. Okay, so Messier didn't discover this one. He discovered some of them, but he's kind of the guy that cataloged a lot of this stuff early on. So he didn't discover this one. It was discovered by Pierre Machain in 
1780, it's a bright reflection nebula. So reflection nebulas are um, actually uh, just clouds of dust, essentially, and they are reflecting the light from the stars kind of around them. The stars that are behind them, stars in front of them, things like that, are causing light to kind of reflect off of those, um, reflect off of those dust particles. And so you end up with these kind of bluish colored nebulas, um, where if you see Orion Nebula, I don't know if you saw it at the beginning, it was kind of red and glowing, and it's because it's actually an active uh, uh, emission nebula, so it's actually creating its own light because it's stars forming and coming together uh, and heating up. So this, however, is a reflection nebula, and you can see, of course, this bluish color here. There's some detail that's kind of up here uh, that's not really wanting to, to show up too well. Um, and normally I would set this a lot higher in time, but if I do, it's going to drift so much that it's really not going to matter. Um, it's just going to blur it. We might try to bump it up to 35 seconds again. Um, but anyway, so what you've got is uh, is this light shining from these stars and reflecting off this clouds of dust, which is what gives it its its appearance. Uh, the nebula, this one's around 1,600 light years away, which is seems to be kind of the a lot of the average distances for a lot of the stuff in the Orion Nebula probably because it's all part of kind of one big complex so it's all kind of in that rough range uh, distant from us so whatever was happening 1600 years ago that's when that light headed this way um, so uh, yeah so pretty interesting we'll see if we get any kind of extra detail yeah it's just shifting really badly um, that's, uh, that's part of the alignment thing, some, some kind of alignment issue there. Um, I did bump my mount on accident, so it is possible that, uh, that we've gotten some issues out of that as well, because I accidentally bumped it. And for some reason, really, really frustrating. We've got a lot of got a lot of image noise in here too. All this kind of speckly stuff is a little bit uh, a little bit annoying. Um, that's caused by the, the image chip kind of heating itself up. So. <laughs> no, the red one isn't isn't Mars and the blue one isn't Venus. We're no actually there are no planets up right now. Venus was up at about eight o'clock. It was the it, you could see it, it was actually visibly out at 8 o'clock. Um, all the other planets are are down down and out of you right now. So you can see here a little bit better. Obviously this as it stacks it's, it's giving us a little bit of better image so uh, things have gotten a little bit better but we've got this, the reason these stars look so bloated is because it's uh, it's kind of smearing them because they're drifting as it's as it's taking that image so so what you got, Jessica? I think 1,600 years ago, the Pied Piper led the rats out of Hamburg. Did he? I don't know. Let's let's see let's see what was happening 1,600 years ago, Jessica. I I literally think you're the only person watching this, so it's kind of kind of fun. It's just kind of a personal conversation here. Uh, let's see here. What happened 1,600 years ago? I think I tried to look in this one up, and it was kind of boring, actually. Um, there wasn't much to report. Let's see here. No, I cannot hear you breathing. It's it's all in chat. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Oh, 1,600 years ago to the day, Rome was sacked by the Visigoth hordes uh, in an event which is recently termed as the 9-11 of the ancient world. I... I, that is not me, that is somebody else writing that. So, um, But, nonetheless, so there you go. 1,600 years ago, Rome was sacked by the Visigoths. So that would have been probably one of the later sackings of Rome that, that happened right before the Roman Empire finally collapsed on itself. So, uh, But anyways, alright, well cool. So, so we found our target, so that's good news. Um, I may leave it here. Let's see here for a minute. Let's see here. But, uh, alright, let's see what else we can find here. Uh, Bard Spiral. Alright. 
So this next one we're going to try to try to spot, given our technical difficulties, is going to be. Let's see. So it's like a DM message of randomness that we normally have. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Every time you type something, it's just popping up in my little chat window here. So I might be a couple of messages behind because I'm like I have to click a, a, the same button to swap between messages and and the settings on the camera. But yeah, I can see your little your little pop-ups there, Jessica. All right, so we're going back to preview mode here, and then I'm going to try to shoot back on over to. Whoa, watch out! So the reason I do this is kind of. Because it really kind of in that messy pixelation sometimes kind of makes it easier to see odd objects. So, all right, so we're going to go on to our next object, NGC 91924, uh, which is supposed to be a barred spiral galaxy in uh, in Orion. Um, we're going to see if we can find it. We may or may not, uh, given given our current situation with stuff. So. Thus far, things have been very far off, but perhaps it'll be a consistent far off in the same direction as the last one, uh, which would be good if it is. So, all right, let me get to my observing list here. Get centered on this thing. At least give me a fighting chance at looking at the star chart and hopefully finding what I'm trying to look for. So, all right, we're gonna center up on this thing. Let's see here, we were pretty far off on that last one. So this one we are going to see if I'm seeing what I think I'm seeing to help me hopefully find what we're looking for. All right, so. Good thing is, I think I know where I'm at on the star chart. So, even if I am pretty far off, I think I've figured out kind of the standard deviation of how far off this thing is on the star chart. So, if nothing else, I can uh, look a little further out and figure out where I'm at. Now, you, Jessica, you see that big long streak on there? That was not a star uh, sliding through. That was actually a shooting star shooting through the image. Right there, it, well, could have been a satellite. I think the speed with which it moved, it was probably a shooting star, but nonetheless, uh, that was, uh, that's pretty cool, so, alright, make sure I'm not losing track myself here, because there's kind of an open spot here in this star field that I may, or I may miss, and get thrown off and not be able to figure out where I'm at. back up. You know what? Let's just, we're going to recenter back on where it had me because that uh, was a good starting point. I'm going to make sure I get myself aligned here so I know I'm where I need to be. Okay, so we had right there so it is not straight down. So that is, that is going to be funky. Okay. Sorry, Jessica, let me bring up your little 
Let me see. What do you got? What are you, what are you, what are you talking about here? Let's see here. And now I have the rack and sack of that quarterback. It's up to you to pull through. What in the world are you talking about? I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about, you crazy. Alright, let's see here. So we're, we're perusing down here. We're, we're headed in the right direction. It's just a matter of making sure we land on our target. That's going to be the problem, so... I am kind of slow and steady wins the race sometimes here. You move too fast and you miss that one little detail, that set of stars that told you where you were at. So I don't want to miss those. Uh, so that will most certainly spell doom. Probably not doom. Alright, so... star is that? Alright, I don't even know what star I'm looking at now. Okay, I think it's that. Yep, that was that. Okay, good. Alright, we're heading in the right direction, I promise. Like I said, slow and steady, right? getting there. I think we're getting there. Don't want to get too excited yet, but I think we might be getting there. I'm getting crazy here faster, which might be a bad idea, but we're going to do it anyways. Alright, let's see here. A really bright star there. star that is, but it's really bright. I think it's that one. Wow. I'm going to tell you, this I've never had this scope be this far off of target, so I must have done some wonky stuff in my alignment process, which is, is really frustrating. Okay, I think I know where we're at. Yep, there's our triangle. Alright, so what I was trying to, one of the things I was trying to get to as a good indicator is this triangle of three fairly brighter stars. There's one really bright star with this little star here and another star there. And you got these two stars. These are all things that I can use to almost mark where I'm at. And then, of course, this, and this is a bright red star that's a little bit further over. And our object should be a little, eh, not so much a little, but further down this way, so we're going to keep on scooting. Um, the fact that those stars are that far to the left, I probably need to shift my, start shifting my view over. I'm going to end up losing stuff here. Whoa, wrong direction. Watch out. So, Jessica, have you been staying quarantined? Is there anybody else even on? If somebody else is on there, say hi or something, so I know you're on here. Otherwise, I feel foolish. Okay. Get this way over here. 
here. All right, so now we're gonna start going back down again. Some more here, and hopefully we'll catch what we're looking for here for too long. Triangle there. It's fairly bright. should come into view, what we're looking for anyways, hopefully be kind of right in this area when it comes up here. There's no guarantees on this. I think this one's a pretty small galaxy, so, and with as much drift as we've got going here, I'm not sure how well we're going to be able to, uh, to pull this one up, but we are certainly going to give it the old college try, as they say. Alright, so I can see something. So, right here, and this is what you're looking for half the time. You're looking for something that just doesn't quite look right. So, this is kind of, these were kind of my indicators. I've got this really bright star. I've got these three on my map. I've got these two stars here, and then I know that there's supposed to be something here. And you can see that there's just kind of this disturbance in the pixels there. So, that said, what we're going to do stop, switch out of our preview mode, go to our video mode, and then we are going to start with a modest 20 seconds here and see what comes out at 20 seconds. something he is really really faint and it uh, rightly so uh, it's it's a pretty faint galaxy anyways um, if I wasn't getting a massive amount of tracking error it would probably help it didn't seem like the tracking error is too bad here we're gonna shift up to 45 second exposure to see what happens but you can see this obviously very faint just something there right it's obvious I mean it's obvious that there's something there but um, this is a galaxy um, for the most part fairly you know un awesome I guess you know in, in a sense other than the fact you're looking at a, a collection of millions or billions of stars um, but it is a barred spiral galaxy galaxy so um, if you think of a galaxy what you traditionally think of spiral nice and cool and spirally uh, barred spiral galaxies are actually uh, they you know it's a spiral galaxy but it looks like it has a bar uh, of gas and material kind of running across the middle of it um, and the re and, and basically uh, something interesting kind of that I, that I had to read about and picked up on uh, for my astronomy class here recently was that those bars actually act almost, they found they actually act almost like funnels um, for gas coming through, uh, are kind of feeding, stoking the center of that galaxy where the major star formation is happening. Um, and so it just kind of funnels that, that gas and material for all those forming stars in there uh, and then eventually it runs out and um, you know, and then uh, your, your galaxy kind of dies. So what we're getting is like, I mean, obviously, again, it's getting a lot of shift in that 45 second exposure uh, when it's doing this. It's just, it's just obscene. Uh, you can see right here, it's actually rejecting these images. It's not even stacking them because they're moving too much, uh, which is really frustrating. We're not going to get a good stack. Um, but you can see right here, this little smudge uh, is, is a galaxy, coincidentally. Um, and the crazy thing is, so that galaxy is actually 133 million light years away. So even though we're not seeing anything particularly fancy or discernible here, uh, it's just a kind of a smudge, 
for us, uh, especially since my mount is being so awful. Um, this is 133 million light years away, so the light that we just captured on our camera left that galaxy when Iguanodon was still roaming the Earth. Um, so, you know, dinosaurs were still kicking, uh, kicking around and doing their thing here uh, when that happened. So that's a pretty big deal when you think about the, the time span and the, the distances. So it may be fairly uninteresting, fairly unassuming to see here on the, the screen, and I think it would look better if my camera could, could actually do its job if my mount was behaving, but nonetheless, you're looking at 133 million light years away. You're looking into the past by 133 million years, which is pretty pretty amazing. So, um, kind of a lot of work to get to an object that really didn't show up to show us much, but that's yeah, alright. You know, it is what it is. Alright, so that said, uh, let's see, we are going to move on here, and we're going to move on to NGC 3227, which is actually a barred spiral galaxy, but it's interacting with uh, a neighboring galaxy, NGC 3226, uh, and they are kind of pulling at one another. Um, we'll see whether we kind of are able to get that kind of detail or not. Hopefully we can. Um, but again, I'm not entirely sure. And these, some of these are new objects for me. I like to pick out and try to find new objects. There's no point looking at the same things over and over again always. Um, so it is possible that this is uh, fairly small. But we are moving out of um, out of the Orion complex here. Um, good night, buddy. Love you. Say I love you. All right, buddy. So we are moving over to the. Uh, we're going to move over to Leo constellation. See what's happening over there. Holy smokes! I got 11 messages. What in the world, Jessica? It was a cheery, horrible class of '99 graduate. I don't. I. Sorry, I was too busy doing other things. I guess. I wasn't at a lot of the football games in '99. Sorry. Uh, by the way, I was having technical issues when you defined the target, so as the only live viewer, don't stress it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Glad to know I can draw in huge crowds. Did you even do you even know what I'm what we were talking about here? It was this little blob right here. This is this is a uh, yeah. So this is a galaxy right here. This smudge, and it would look more impressive if it was actually stacking, uh, but it's being stupid. So. Um, yeah, so anyways, that's 133 million light years away, basically. Always err on the side of caution. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I told Facebook that my, or YouTube that my videos were not for children, so if I slip on occasion, it happens. I don't really care. Uh, no, I really don't care. People get over it. I try to behave myself a little bit on here. So is your stuff kind of like an old school everyone dies at the fair photo exposure technology? <laughs> I don't even know exactly what that means. <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta, I'll have to watch that. I don't think I've seen a million ways to die in the, in the West. Yes, but anyways, yes, so that's a galaxy. So we're going to try to move to a new galaxy, Jessica, so let's let's see what we can find. Um, we're moving to the Leo constellation for this next galaxy, so let's see what happens. All right, let's get back to our... Get back to our preview mode here, or finder mode. So this next one, as I said, is NGC 3227, and it is interacting with its neighbor, uh, 3220, NGC 3226. So we will see what happens. <laughs> nice. 
night, guys. Hi, Karen. Keep reading. <laughs> I'll keep reading. You keep typing. I'll keep reading. Um, Matthew was going to bed, so he had to tell me. Had to tell me good night. So I'm kind of enjoying the last time I tried to be all kind of semi-professional about it, and turning off the mic and all that stuff. And at this time, I just don't care. It's it's this whole session's already kind of gone to crap because my my scope's being just terrible. But that's okay. We're gonna make the best of it. Just you and I, Jessica. We're gonna troop through this. Let's see what we can do. All right, so let's see here. We are. Oh man, this this one might be a little tough because good old uh, Leo. There's not a lot of stars out here to to get me in the right direction. So, although oddly enough. I believe it may have landed us fairly close this time around. I might be wrong. I might just be seeing what I want to see, but I don't think so. Maybe I am. I don't know. But there's some stars that seem to fit the pattern here, so we're going to move up and see if we're getting what we think we're getting. sometimes with this uh, stuff. I push a button and it goes the wrong, goes opposite the direction I want it to go, so. Okay, all right. Let's see where this takes us. Well, well, I think we might not be as bad off as I thought we were going to be, which is a good thing. But, let's see. to move these, uh, we're going to get these stars over here. So these are the stars I'm pretty sure that I'm spotting what I need to spot with these guys over here. So we're going to try to There we go. I'm to get this guy further over towards the middle. I thought it was. 
tell you what, this is it's been a frustrating night here. What these daggum stars? All right, well, we're gonna keep uh, we'll keep scanning down here a little bit, panning downwards and see. Just see if perhaps my terrible intuition is, is any better than I think it is. Because there are very few stars for me to find a pattern in here. Or at least I have to be zoomed in far enough that it makes it difficult to, to find them. So. This is rather disappointing to have to fight this much to find stuff. Um, it's kind of the whole point of a computerized scope is not to have to do this. You know, you can typically find your, your objects really quickly, but for some reason, for some reason tonight, my scope is really, my mount is just really far off for some reason. I'm not sure why. Okay, hold on. May have just found a pattern. Maybe. Maybe not. Just don't know if we're gonna find this one, so at least not in my not in the current state with my telescope being the way it is. Um, it's really frustrating. Well, I do believe, honestly, I hate to do this, but I think I'm gonna end this session because uh, it has been just an exercise in frustration. I mean. We've managed to find at least a couple of the targets that I had planned tonight, but that's I had about five to six targets planned tonight, but
can't always control what your scope is going to do. Sometimes it wants to cooperate, sometimes it doesn't. So, and it seems like tonight uh, was definitely one of those nights that did not want to cooperate. So, I'm going to cut my losses on this video, and uh, I will put uh, put some photos up on Facebook if I can get some, and once I can get some, uh, get them, get them squared away and nice looking and everything, I will get them put up, um, but yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here, we're getting, just having a heck of a time trying to find our targets tonight, so, uh, I don't